I will start with an old saying which is, I quote, history repeats itself, unquote. At least for me is an old saying I heard this from old men when I was a kid. And they were right. The other day, shortly after President Donald Trump announced the United States will cut all donation to mostly charity organizations. Suddenly the United Nations and several charity organizations trough the mainstream media announced that at least three African countries, I quote, African countries on brink of famine as Donald Trump slashes foreign aid, then continues. The world's largest humanitarian crisis in 70 years has been declared in three African countries. CBC Canada's comments sounds like this. The conflict-fueled hunger crises in Nigeria, Somalia and South Sudan have culminated in a trio of potential famines hitting almost simultaneously. Nearly 16 million people in the three countries are at risk of dying within months. What a coincidence, also after 40 years the history repeats itself just as I said at the beginning. What I mean by this. Some of you probably still remember back in the 80s the same countries, Somalia, Sudan had to deal with the same situation. At the time billions of dollars were given to those countries, especially Somalia, however nothing happened. Or it did. Yes it did, Somalia and Eritrea got into a costly war which ended nowhere, however millions or probably billions were spent on weapon by the government. Since then 40 years went by and two generations grew up without helping themselves. Relying on free money donated by Western societies taxpayers like you. On March 17, 2017 Canada jumped again and gave away another almost $120 million to African countries. Canada to give $119 million in aid to Middle Eastern African countries suffering food crises. Immigration Minister Ahmed Hassan announced aid for Nigeria, Somalia, South Sudan and Yemen. CBC News posted. March 17, 2017, Canada will provide $119 million to help people in countries in the midst of food crises. Immigration Minister Ahmed Hassan told reporters in Toronto on Friday that the money will go toward those in Nigeria, South Sudan, Somalia and Yemen who are facing extreme food insecurity. Canada will provide $27 million to Nigeria, $21 million to Somalia, $37 million to South Sudan and $34 million to Yemen. Hassan said the Canadian government urges the power players in these countries to allow aid to be delivered. In spite of the fact that internationally is well known that countries like Sudan and Somalia are the most corrupt countries on earth Canada is still providing free money to the governments of this countries. You don't have to believe me but I want you to watch these videos which are hidden from you by the mainstream media. World's most corrupt countries. Here are the most corrupt countries in the world. Transparency International releases its latest annual review, which draws on a mix of business and government sources to rank nations. With a score of just 10 out of 100, Somalia holds the undesirable title as the world's most corrupt country. Joining Somalia at second from the bottom is South Sudan. This relatively new country only gained its independence six years ago. And the third most corrupt country is North Korea. The report says these countries with the lowest scores are generally characterized by impunity for corruption, poor governance, and weak institutions. Here is another video which proves the corruption in Somalia. Somalia has secured around $130 million in financial aid from world leaders at the UN General Assembly. Now, that's despite corruption allegations against the Somali president and his ministers. Our correspondent Kristen Salumi spoke to President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud in New York about the challenges his country faces. We're doing two things. One is uh, briefing the, the General Assembly as it is a biggest international global get-together where Somalia come from. For Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, the annual gathering of world leaders in New York is a chance to court the very people his country depends on for survival. The international community provides more than a billion dollars a year to Somalia. It funds international peacekeepers who are on the front lines of the fight against al-Shabaab fighters. That money also covers humanitarian assistance, so desperately needed after years of conflict and drought. 
But a recent report of the UN Somalia Monitoring Committee obtained by Al Jazeera found evidence government officials, including the president, were using the Somalia Central Bank as their personal slush fund. Have you been diverting state money to personal accounts for you or any of your government ministers? What I would like to say is when it comes to corruption and money movement anywhere, in this world no one can hide the movement of money from one bank to the other, from one institution to the other. Anybody who did that, no one is above the law, no one can do that. The Somali government has made very clear commitment to zero tolerance for corruption. The UN special representative to the country says corruption remains a concern, but the aid has to keep coming. And despite allegations of corruption, the country collected over $130 million in donations this week from world leaders. Yet, in spite of all this, there is a long list of donations made by Justin Trudeau between October 2015 and April 2017. This amount is slightly over $9 billion. You can check out the full list at the following address on the screen. As you know, if not I tell you now, in 2015 and 2016 Canada imported about 30,000 Syrian refugees. I was saying about since in some cases you hear about 25,000 then 30,000 matter of fact Trudeau once talked about 40,000 Syrian refugees. Regardless of the number of the refugees at the same time Marie-Claude Bibo, Minister of International Development and Lafranca Ferney besides the amount spent on the Syrian refugees announced an extra $100 million aid to the United Nations for Syrian refugees. Here she is. And for all the refugees still in the region, it will mean an increased chance of being resettled abroad, not just in Canada, but in a num number of countries around the world. Today's funding in the, is in addition to the assistance that will be provided through the Government of Canada's Syria Emergency Relief Fund. Canadians are supporting efforts to welcome to Canada 25,000 Syrian refugees, but they can also make a difference in the region. For every eligible dollar donated to registered Canadian charities until December 31st, in response to the conflict in Syria, the government will set aside one dollar in the Syria Emergency Relief Fund. The funds will then be used to support experienced international and Canadian humanitarian organizations providing life-saving assistance in the region. And the list goes on but I will stop here before annoy you with details. The question rises. If for the past 40 years the billions of donated dollars did not help why spending more? If those African countries are so corrupt, if more than half of the donated money ends up in the pockets of corrupt African politicians, then why a country like Canada keeps pumping taxpayers' hard-earned money into this country's? Well, my friends, it's called politics. Each country has its own reason to do that. In Canada's case right now, March 2017, according to Marie-Claude Bibo, Minister of International Development and Lafranca Ferney, the reason is simple. Canada wishes to be in the United Nations Security Council. Please listen carefully to her words. Canada announces support to fight corruption. December 9, 2016 Ottawa, Ontario, Global Affairs Canada. As Canada marked International Anti-Corruption Day. The Honourable Marie-Claude Bibo, Minister of International Development in La Francophone. Today announced $13.6 million over four years to work with communities, civil society organizations, public institutions and businesses to combat corruption in the following 12 countries. Argentina, Colombia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ghana, Guatemala, Honduras, Jamaica, Mozambique, Nigeria, Peru, Trinidad and Tobago, and Venezuela. Implemented by Transparency International, the Integrity, Mobilization, Participation, Accountability, Anti-Corruption and Transparency, Impact, Project Activities will include Working with public institutions to develop and enforce better anti-corruption policies and practices. 
educating citizens about their rights and how they can address corruption or pursue legal recourse, empowering civil society organizations with the tools they need to identify corruption issues and advocate for transparent, inclusive and accountable governance, and working with businesses to improve their standards and adopt ethical practices for a clean, productive economy. Consistent with its focus on promoting inclusive and accountable governance, Canada is committed to fighting corruption. According to Transparency International's Global Corruption Barometer 2013, one in four people have paid a bribe while trying to access the most basic services. For those in the poorest countries, this ratio is one in two. This corruption violates the right of people to live better lives and efforts made to improve conditions around the world. Quotes. Today's announcement reaffirms Canada's commitment to tackling corruption. The cost of corruption goes far beyond any bribe paid, law violated or money stolen. It diverts money from public services like education and health. Needless to say the Canadian government denies all this. In Canadian politics there are no such things like stealing, corruption or bribery. There is only donation, aid, help, overspending and lots of political correctness. After all, the donor, the government gives away free money, the receiving partner gets free money. Everybody lives happily ever after. But the Canadian taxpayer, 